Hi, I'm Laura GB, and in this video we're going to look at using Power Automate to create items in DevOps. And so here we are in DevOps, we've got an empty project called Demo. Okay, so let's go back over to Power Automate. And we've got an empty solution here, which is what we're going to use to put our flow in, just so I can show how it works in the solution as well. So we're going to start by creating flow, so new, automation, cloud flow, and instant. And let's call it create DevOps items. And let's go for manually trigger a flow. And click create. We're going to go for a new step. And into here, we're going to do a quick search for DevOps. And then I'm going to click on the, the DevOps so we can see the full list. And here are all the actions. Notice it's a premium connector. Um, you can see this. I'm, I'm working in the classic version of DevOps, of, sorry, of Power Automate. So we can see the premium labels. And uh, we're going to click on create a work item. Now, this is the first time in this environment that I've connected to Azure DevOps. So therefore, we've got to do the sign in. Now, when I click sign in, but it flashes up a window. And you think, oh, it's going to let me pick an ID. No, it's not. It's just going to assume you want your Power Automate a login to be your DevOps login. Okay. And uh, so it then asks you organization name. So then the drop down, there we go. I'm going to have for data. And in my project, I've only got one project in this organization. So we're going to go for demo. Now, if you get an error at this point, it's because your organization hasn't got a setting. Have a look in the blog post, link down below. Um, that'll tell you where you need to go. Okay. Now, work item type, depending on the, the process that you've got associated with that project. I've got an agile one. So we're going to start with an epic. And we're going to have in our title, it's the shiny project. And our description is going to be to create a shiny thing. And you can highlight and do formatting. You can have bulleted lists, etc., etc. behind the scenes, just so you know, that's HTML text behind there. Okay, so if we, have, if we need to put anything else in there. So let's give us the basics. Let's save that. And then let's test it. So let's go for manually and let's go test. It's checking the connections. And then we're going to go run. And there we go. Your, flat, your flow ran successfully. Let's go and have a look in DevOps. Do a quick screen refresh. And there we are. We've got a shiny project. And if we go and open it, we can see we've got formatting in our description. So let's just so we come on this again. Let's just delete that task and then let's come back into here and edit our flow. And let's look at the next step on. So you don't want to create one item quite often. You might want to create a child item. So let's look at how to do that. So let's go for a new step. And again, we're going to search for DevOps. And I'm just going to go for create a work item straight off the list. And again, we're going to pick the org and we're going to pick the project. And under a, if you go for the traditional um, hierarchy, under an epic comes a feature. And so we're going to call design shiny. And we're going to put in our design stuff. Now that would create the task, but it wouldn't be a child. Okay. So we're going to go and show the advanced options and which basically means the optional options and here's all the things in here okay there's a whole bunch of stuff in here most of them pretty obvious okay um but we're going to go for connecting to that item we created in the last one and for those we use the link url and the link type so the link url click into there and scroll in, and then search in my dynamic content for url and it comes up twice don't ask me but they both work i've tried them both so let's click on the first one and we get the URL from create a work item and then the link type. OK, here are the link types that you can have in, in, in DevOps and hierarchy reverse means parent. OK, make make that URL the parent hierarchy forward, would make it the child. So we're going to go for hierarchy reverse. And also, while we're here, let's have a look at one other thing that we quite often want to do in these things. And that's assigning it. So let's assign this one here to me. 
So I'm going to put in my email address and we're going to go to save. And then let's test it again. And there we are, three green ticks. So let's go back to our DevOps and do a quick screen refresh. I'm in the backlog view. So in the backlog view, you get to see the hierarchy. And there we are, we've got shiny project and design shiny underneath it. And it's been assigned to me. So that's created us a task and created us a child task so we can start to build hierarchies and things. So the next part I want to go through is why did I put it inside a solution? I put it inside a solution so that we can move it from dev into a production. Um, so therefore, we need to make it that we could point to a different project, perhaps point to a different organization. So let's go back into, I'm going to delete these tasks again. And we're going to come back into here and let's talk about making this um, work in being able to export out the solution. So let's go back into my solution. And you can see I've got my flow in there and I've got my connection reference. So we're going to add in two ones to cope with the organization name and the project name. So we're going to go for new and I'm going to go for more and we're going to go for environment variable. Uh, I'm going to call this DevOps organization and quick description in there. It's going to be text and I'm going to put the current value to be hat full of data and click save and there we are we've got one so i'm just going to quickly um add the other one so there we are we've got our our two environment variables with values i'm going to go back into the flow to edit it and in to create work item and where it says organization name i'm going to drop that down custom value and then you can see in my environment variables there you are i've got devops organization but actually you could have done I, if, if you've got lots of them you can do a search why naming your environment variables sensible things is a really good idea so we're going to do custom value in there as well and there we are that works i'm just going to quickly do that to the other item so there we go and while we're here as well we're going to be really good because it's always good to, to teach good practices and we're going to go create item and so we're, that's that's the epic parent and we're going to rename this one as well to be the feature child we're going to save and i'm just going to quickly check devops I haven't got anything in there so let's just do a test again so there we are we've run our flow it worked according to power automate and if we come into here it worked in here as well according to devops so that was using power automate to create tasks in devops i'm laura gb if you haven't already please press subscribe take care now